Hello and welcome to the News from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sofia Palace in the presence of the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the President of the Constitutional Court, Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Deputy President of the Supreme Judicial Council and the President of the Court of Cassation, Advisor Abdullah Al Buenin, the Attorney General Dr Ali bin Fadl Al Buenin, who congratulated His Majesty on the occasion of the last 10 days of Ramadan wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness in the Kingdom and the people's safety and security. His Majesty the King exchanged with the guests congratulations on the occasion, wishing them many happy returns. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Presidents of the Judicial Authorities for the sincere efforts and dedicated work to serve the country and its people, affirming the vital role of the Judicial Authority in bolstering the principles of justice and equality and protecting the rights and freedoms. His Majesty asserted that the Bahrain will continue its approach and noble humanitarian message of establishing the values of tolerance, justice, equality, peace and coexistence, wishing all success. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sofia Palace in the presence of the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Maharak Governor, Salman bin Isa bin Hindi, the Capital Governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, and the Northern Governor, Ali Olfo, who congratulated His Majesty on the occasion of the last 10 days of Ramadan, praying to Allah the Almighty for many happy returns and the progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. His Majesty exchanged the congratulations, wishing the guests many happy returns and thanking them for their sentiments. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Interior and all the Ministry's affiliates, healing the awareness and contributions and initiatives provided by the Governorates, which enhanced the national efforts to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the Governorate's role in increasing communication with all segments of society and in holding events and programmes that contribute to establishing national belonging and the values of loyalty and citizenship. His Majesty asserted that with unity, Bahrain will be able to overcome this exceptional stage and to contain the pandemic, wishing all success. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Zanal, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the adjournment of the second session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura, the Representatives Councils. She expressed deep thanks and gratitude for the directives that support the Representatives Council received from His Majesty which left a large impact on the development of the national action and cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to make further achievements for the country and its people. Zanal also sent two cables of congratulations to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa where she expressed appreciation and praise for the effective cooperation approach and coordination witnessed in the joint work between the two authorities and the national achievements made for the interest of the country and its people in light of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty the King. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, following the Royal Order adjourning the second session of the fifth legislative term. Al Saleh hailed His Majesty the King's support to the Shura Council and to the Legislative Authority to achieve the vital interests of the Kingdom and its people and further the democratic and development process during His Majesty the King's prosperous era. He reiterated unwavering allegiance to His Majesty the King, pledging to continue the endeavour and achieve further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus COVID-19 reached 3,601 with 10 recovered and 36 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap at a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. The Saudi Ministry of Health announced that the Kingdom reported 1,905 new corona cases in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of cases to 44,830. 
the number of daily reported cases in the country began to decrease on Tuesday for the first time since the start of the outbreak. This is due to increased testing, which has allowed the Ministry to isolate active cases, as well as the public's commitment to following preventative measures, he added. A health official added that the number of recoveries recorded in the past day was more than the number of infections. The United Arab Emirates Punitive and Corrective Establishments, the PCE, distributed 30,000 medical masks manufactured by inmates to workers in industrial areas and healthcare facilities amid the coronavirus outbreak. The masks were produced as part of the Interior Ministry's rehabilitation programmes. According to the official WAM news agency, the PCE initiative was launched to mark the Zayed Day for humanitarian action and to contribute to the ongoing efforts aimed at containing the spread of coronavirus, COVID-19. According to the Mani Ministry of Health, the country recorded today an increase in daily coronavirus cases with 322 new infections confirmed over the past 24 hours, raising the total to 4,341. Of the new cases, 80 cases are Omanis and 242 are of different nationalities, while the total of recoveries has reached 1,303 people so far. The Ministry continues to urge individuals to adhere to isolation procedures and social distancing to help slow the spread of the pandemic. On a related note, the World Health Organization WHO said today that coronavirus that causes COVID-19 could become endemic like HIV, warning against any attempt to predict how long it would keep circulating and calling for a massive effort to counter it. WHO emergencies expert Mike Ryan said the virus may become another epidemic virus in our communities and the virus may never go away. He added that there are no promises and no dates predicting the end of the virus, adding that this disease may or may not settle into a long problem. Moving on to international news, as Filipino authorities started moving 200,000 people away from their homes in coastal and mountainous areas because of fears of flooding and landslides as a typhoon made landfall today. The State Weather Bureau said a typhoon at Wong Fong, first to hit the country this year, slammed into the eastern Philippines, packing winds of 155 kilometres per hour and gusts of up to 190 kilometres per hour. Social distancing measures to curb the spread of the novel coronavirus are likely to complicate efforts to move thousands of people into evacuation centres, such as classrooms and school gymnasiums. And now with the latest business news, here's Barra. Thank you, Keith. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International and now going all the way to Dubai as the chief executive officer of the world's busiest airport for international travel wants to get globe flying again but even the acknowledges uh, everything remains up in the air amid the coronavirus pandemic. Paul Griffiths uh, oversees what now is a much quieter Dubai International Airport. The millions that once poured through the concourses of this airport crucial to east-west travel no longer are flying as countries around the world have instituted lockdowns and travel bans to fight the virus and the COVID-19 illness it causes. The Italian government has approved a massive package of tax cuts and financial aid to help citizens ranging from hotel and restaurant owners to working parents who are struggling with the economic devastation of the new coronavirus pandemic. According to the Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte, the relief measures aimed at reducing the damage to Italy's economy, which was already stagnant before the COVID-19 outbreak, have been estimated to cost some 55 billion euros. 
New Zealand's government plans to borrow and spend massive and massive amounts of money as it tries to keep unemployment below 10 percent in the wake of the new coronavirus pandemic. Finance Minister Grant Robertson unveiled a budget unlike any in the nation's history. Debt would shoot up from just over 20 percent of GDP to 54 percent by 2023 and thousands of jobs would be created by putting people to work, building homes and improving the environment. Stocks fell for the second day in a row on Wall Street yesterday, weighed down by worries about the slow recovery for the economy. The weakness came after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell warned about the threat of the prolonged recession because of the shutdowns related to the coronavirus pandemic. The sharpest losses hit stocks that most need a healthy economy for their profits to grow, like energy companies and banks. And that's all for the business news for this evening, and it's back to you, Keith. Thank you, Barra. Well, before COVID-19 forced the closure of shops around the globe, retailers have been introducing robots like Tally, a self-driving robot that can take inventory of store shelves and clothing stacks. The pandemic has accelerated those trends as retailers seek to reduce costs and keep the customers and employees safe. Tally was created by Symbi Technologies, a startup based in California, USA. Simbi has leased its shelf-standing robot to supermarkets, drugstores and other retailers around the world. San Diego-based BrainCore hires a robot operating system that can automate existing machines. Its main product so far is a self-driving floor cleaner that can work during store hours and avoid running into people.